Today is Wednesday of the second week of Easter, um, Wednesday, April 22nd, 2020. Greetings from St. Eugene Parish in Asheville, North Carolina. This past weekend, we reflected on the gospel passage of when Jesus appears in the locked room and wishes his disciples peace. But there is a second part to this gospel that I want to reflect on for the homily today. This is the second half of that gospel of the exchange between Jesus and the apostle we call Doubting Thomas. You remember that he was not with the group the first time that Jesus wished his disciples and apostles peace. So you can imagine the disciples rushing to uh, tell Thomas this good news, that they've seen Jesus, they've seen the wounds in his hands and his side, and even though they abandoned Jesus, that the Lord had forgiven them. And Thomas is not easily convinced, as you might imagine. He's been risen from the dead. Jesus is walking through locked doors. His body is wounded, but not bleeding. Somehow he's uh, walking around alive. Uh, Thomas is a bottom line kind of guy. Unless I see the mark of the nails in his hands and the wounds in his side, I will not believe. Maybe we shake our heads at Thomas's attitude, but I think he would be very much at home in 21st century uh, American culture. Even unless we have scientific proof of viruses, of evolution, of life after death, or life on other planets in the universe, any number of issues, we have a hard time making up our minds because we don't want to be foolish. We don't want to be scammed. We want to be convinced before we commit. So we look back at Jesus's prayer at the Last Supper. He had said that not any of his followers that his father had given him had been lost. And we remember that Jesus says, God is like a shepherd that leaves the 99 to seek out the one sheep that is lost. So it isn't a surprise that one week later in the same gospel passage, Jesus appears once again to his apostles and disciples and wishes them peace. And he walks right up to Thomas, one of his lost sheep, and says, put your hands in my side, put your hands in your hands into the wounds, and do not be unbelieving, but believe. Can you imagine Thomas's life at this moment has radically changed? Everything that his friends had told him about his teacher was true. And his beloved teacher was not dead, but was alive and had come back especially to see him. Thomas's doubts had been washed away in one second. And then, of course, he falls to his knees and looks at the Lord and says, my Lord and my God. Now, Jesus follows this up by saying something to all of us. Have you come to believe because you have seen? Blessed are those who have not seen and believed. None of us have put our hands into the nail marks. None of us have put our hands into his side. But we do our best to be followers of Jesus and to try to shine his light in whatever little corner of the world God has us. And Jesus calls us blessed in Hebrew, meaning someone who has received a great inheritance or a great favor. Blessed can also be translated as happy. So here we have a good thought for us as we shelter at home, living a life that none of us could have even imagined months ago. Jesus tells us that we are blessed. We have received a great inheritance through our baptisms and our lives as Catholic Christians. And this should make us happy. And we may not feel very happy in the new reality that we're living at in, in the con current uh, crisis. We may feel uncertainty as to how our country will begin to reopen. We may be afraid. But this week, Jesus tells us to concentrate on gratitude for the great blessings that God has showered on us, that these blessings should make us happy. One of the houses I passed on my way here from the rectory has a sign in the window, count your blessings. So maybe this is a good way to deal with our restlessness and our anxieties 
and our doubts this week. Let's look at all of the good things that are still in our lives. Let's live a grateful life this week and see Jesus come to us just as he did to Thomas and deal with our doubts. Blessed are you who have not seen, but have believed.